morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for joining us here overlooking the Don't Susquehanna the River, river. Yes. to have an important conversation about the Chesapeake Bay. My name is Andrew Dayhoff, I'm the Executive Director of the Susquehanna River Basin Commission. Why are we gathered here instead of on the shores of the bay? Simple. Rivers like the Susquehanna that feed into the bay are inseparable from the bay itself. As go the tributaries, so go the bay, and these tributaries don't recognize state lines. So just as this commission is a partnership between New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and the federal government, so too is the Chesapeake Partnership, a joining of the bay states and the federal government working together to achieve bay restoration efforts through 2025 and beyond. We brought together this morning a few members of that critical partnership from both the states and the federal government, along with the institution charged with assessing their progress. We've asked them to share with you their perspective on the progress they're seeing and the commitment to continued restoration efforts. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, great to be here on this uh, not so uh, warm uh, uh, summer day. Um, very excited about the release of the report card, about the efforts that the states are doing. Uh, I wanted to highlight the, the, uh, the, the, the highlight of the day, uh, the role of Pennsylvania and pulling their weight and doing so very successfully. So really, really excited about that. You can say that again, Fernando. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and we'll continue, I think, the, the, the importance of emphasizing the partnership, not only um, across states, across institutions, across people, um, and the importance of, of the, the fact that this collaboration is actually leading to improvements in the overall Bay is really, really encouraging for, and we'll be doing these efforts uh, uh, for years to come. And so it is my pleasure next to introduce uh, Secretary Josh Kurtz of Maryland Department of Natural Resources. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today and discuss the progress that we've all made by working together. I think when you look at this score and this report card um, and you see all of us here standing together, uh, it, it was accomplished as a team. It's so important to have the federal government, the state partners, our local governments all kind of pulling in the right direction, rowing together, if you will, I guess apropos of, of being on the Susquehanna River. Um, and also being a little bit competitive. We were just discussing uh, with Governor Shapiro the importance of that a little bit. Right. Um, and Governor Moore, I know, is, is very proud to be a part of this partnership and to work so closely with our, our colleagues here in Pennsylvania. Uh, we've seen tremendous progress. Uh, we still have strides to make, um, but what we can do is learn from each other and continue this great work, continue to build on, I think, the strength of that partnership as we move forward. And, and we're just gonna continue to see more success um, cleaner water, more abundant wildlife, and more opportunities for our citizens to engage with the watershed. So pleased to be here today, very proud of the work that we've all been able to accomplish, and, and thank you, Governor Shapiro, for, for having us, for your leadership, the investment that you've made and your administration has made, uh, incredible, incredible momentum for us to build on. Um, it's now my honor to introduce uh, my colleague and, and friend, Adam Ortiz, from the Environmental Protection Agency. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor uh, <laughs> Secretary Kurtz. It's a tremendous uh, pleasure to be here on behalf of the Environmental Protection Agency, and it's no accident that we're here in the upstream, in the heart of the upstream watershed. Um, EPA's focus has been engaging in all the states and bringing the partnership back together to restore the Chesapeake Bay. And up here, we have local streams that are national treasures as well. And what we've seen in our engagement is we're trying to catch up in many ways to the momentum that the Commonwealth has already exhibited in bringing the agricultural community and towns and cities together to accelerate restoration. Today's grade is the best in almost a generation, and that doesn't happen by accident. That happens because people are stepping up at the local level, across industries, across state lines, and in partnership with the federal government. So there's a lot of work to do, but there's a lot to be proud of today. And uh, it's an honor to be standing uh, beside Governor Josh Shapiro. We work so closely with all the members of his cabinet. You can see he's adopted some of Maryland's uh, cabinet here as well today um, because there's so much to do together. But Governor, I want to thank you for your leadership and your team, and it's an honor to be here with you today. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. It's great to have everyone here today, and I want to say welcome to Harrisburg, particularly for our partners um, at the federal level and from Maryland. And I appreciate the partnership that we have been able to build and I'm grateful that everyone is here because we have all collectively made a commitment to protect the Chesapeake Bay watershed and to recommit ourselves to the work yet ahead. 
I want you to know that I am particularly grateful to Governor Wes Moore of Maryland, my friend and partner in this work, and grateful that his team is with us here today. I think this is yet another example of what is possible when we come together, when we work together, not just across different levels of government, federal and state, but across state lines and making sure that we are all rowing in the same direction. I want to say a special thanks to the three key members of my team who are here today who have been doing this work for many years. Secretary Russell Redding of the Department of Agriculture, Secretary Fundon of the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, and of course, Acting Secretary Shirley of the Department of Environmental Protection. We understand that cleaning up a watershed, one that spans six states and the District of Columbia, and contains more than 100,000 rivers and streams. Well, we understand that is a monumental task, but we're not deterred from doing that important work. I want to say how grateful I am to Dr. Morales Wilhelm and the team at the University of Maryland for all of the hard work that you do to track the progress we're making. This is obviously a big task and the continuous monitoring shows that we're getting it right and we're making progress. And I think it's important that we come together and celebrate that progress. This year, Chesapeake Bay got its highest grade in 22 years. And Professor, I understand that's not on a curve. That's legit, right? And the portion of the bay that the Susquehanna River flows into, the same river that you see right next to me here today, well, it got the second best grade in the entire watershed and showed some of the strongest improvements that we have seen in years. You've heard me say this before, I'm competitive as hell. And so while the second best grade is a hell of a lot better than we've been in recent years, I want us to have the best grade next time those grades are given out. You hear me on that, Professor, right? All right. The Upper Bay is significantly improving, and that's because we have focused here in Pennsylvania. And I'm proud of that work, and I want to talk a little bit about how we've accomplished that. First, I want to give a special shout out to my predecessor, Governor Tom Wolf. He and his administration, led by the secretaries who I mentioned before and my deputy chief of staff, Sam Robinson, they made it a priority to clean up our waterways including the three cabinet secretaries who began this work in the Wolf administration, and we've seen it continue during my leadership. They developed a strategic plan to make real progress in cleaning up the Bay, and they followed that up with real investment and serious and meaningful community engagement that allowed us to reach this point. When I took office, we doubled down on that work that began under Governor Wolf, and I tasked DEP, I tasked Department of Agriculture and DCNR with picking up where Governor Wolf left off. This is important work, not just for the Bay, but for Pennsylvanians who rely on our streams and rivers for clean drinking water, for fishing, for outdoor recreation, for jobs, that we have a clean water system. It's also our constitutional right here in Pennsylvania. Article 1, Section 27 specifically lays out that Pennsylvanians have a constitutional right to clean air and pure water. My administration takes that responsibility very seriously to protect our constitutional rights. And I want to thank the teams at DEP, DCNR, and of course at AG, who have worked so hard to identify the trouble spots over the years and then engage with those local partners and invest the dollars necessary to clean up our streams, creeks, and rivers. And we're doing all this work alongside our farmers and making sure that they consider themselves partners in this progress. We've helped our ag producers invest more in sustainable infrastructure that keeps chemicals out of our waterways and creates a more prosperous ag sector. You all know that I consider ag to be one of the five key pillars of economic opportunity in Pennsylvania. We are working in concert with our ag partners. We're investing in outdoor recreation economy by building forest buffers to protect Pennsylvania's streams and rivers. And we're investing in upgrades and repairs to wastewater treatment facilities to prevent stormwater from carrying those harmful nutrients downstream in a major rainfall. Those are just some of the steps we're taking. Since 2019, Pennsylvania has invested approximately a billion dollars in Chesapeake Bay restoration efforts. During that same time period, the ag industry has reduced nitrogen runoff 
by 2 million pounds. That's a lot of runoff that has been reduced. We've opened up three new state parks, Secretary Fundun said, in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, and we have now protected 3,500 acres along our watershed. We've planted 834 miles of buffers along rivers and streams. More than half of the buffers planted in the entire Chesapeake watershed since 2019. These are important data points for you to hear, and it symbolizes an important effort that's been put in by our administration, by the Wolf administration, and it's why we've made such significant progress. I want to tell you a story about just one of those streams, Turtle Creek in Union County, because I think it's a great example of how we've all worked together in order to accomplish this. For Turtle Creek, it started when a landowner named Josh Sadiston, Sadiston walked into the Union County Conservation District to ask for help because he was losing his pasture to erosion. The local conservation team brought in partners from the state, including DEP, to put together a project team to examine the site he identified and implement a stream bank stabilization plan to prevent further pasture loss. At this time, and at the same time, we have improved the water quality in Turtle Creek. When Josh's neighbors came and saw the improvements, they wanted the same benefits on their land, and they voluntarily joined the work to restore Turtle Creek. This is the private sector, working together with the public sector for the common good. What they did there was they used log and rock structures to stabilize stream banks. They installed fences to keep livestock away from the edges of streams, and they reseeded the banks with native plants. Those plant roots now provide the long-term stability for the stream banks, while also soaking up the nutrients from manure and fertilizer runoff so it doesn't end up washing into the stream. Because of this work, well, Turtle Creek was officially removed from the Clean Water Act impaired waters list just a few months ago. Another example of the meaningful progress that we are making together. Together, the community restored the creek's water quality and habitat while actually benefiting the working farms and agriculture landscape that rely on it. It was a big win for Union County, Pennsylvania. It was a big win for Pennsylvania and Maryland and everyone who relies on the bay. And since Turtle Creek feeds into the Susquehanna River, ultimately, of course, the Chesapeake Bay is the big winner. It's just one example of the work we're doing, the work we are funding at the state level and that is having its intended effect. We're seeing real results and improvement in the Chesapeake Bay. And this, of course, is part of our GSD agenda in Pennsylvania, where we focus on getting stuff done. We're not talking about fixing the bay anymore. We are fixing the bay, and we are making sure Pennsylvania does its fair share. My administration is proud of this progress. And we're going to continue to do this work for years to come. You have my commitment that this work will continue. Pennsylvania is all in. We have great partners at the federal level and the state level, particularly our partners in Maryland. And I look forward to working with all of you to continue this progress. And one of these days, you all got to join me at the governor's residence. We'll grab a few canoes from Fundun and we'll head out into the river and we'll enjoy ourselves along the waterway. Thank you all very much. Thank you all very much for the progress that we've made. And with that, um, we'll be happy to take a few questions. Thank you. Questions from you guys first? Sure. I don't want to take, uh, are you taking off topic questions? I will. Can we yeah, do absolutely. this first and then I'll come back to you? Yeah. Yes. Well, Governor, uh, the relationship hey, with Maryland in the past has been a little contentious on this yeah. topic. Have you noticed a change in the in the relationship. Absolutely. Look, I was attorney general when I got a call from Governor Hogan's office saying that they were about to sue uh, Governor Wolf and his administration. I tried to work on that as AG to temper that. And of course, one of the first things Governor Moore and I talked about when we were both sworn in to new terms uh, was how we could partner together in a constructive manner to fix the bay. And I made a pledge to him and he made a pledge to me that we would work together to do that. I'm mindful that for years, Pennsylvania was seen as not doing its fair share. That changed under Governor Wolf, and uh, that's continuing on my watch. And we are working very productively, very collaboratively with the other states uh, who are here and, and involved in the Bay work. 
I suspect if one of your children came home with a C plus, I just can't hear you, Dennis. I, I suspect that if you, one of your kids came home with a C plus, you wouldn't be patting them on the back. But we're, we're kind of doing that here today with a C plus. Well, we're we're moving up. We're up in the B range, and we're seeing great improvement. And let me tell you, what I do with my kids is. I focus less on the grade and more on their commitment and dedication to learning and whether or not they're improving in their studies. And I think what we've seen here is not only a good grade for Pennsylvania, but real improvement. And you're seeing a real commitment uh, to, to being better, and that's exactly what we're doing. On the Thanks. same vein of relationships, you know, there's relationships with other states. Can you talk a little bit about the relationship that you have with the agriculture sector, with farmers, you know, that 1% who's, who's contributing a lot to the street? I think for a long time, farmers were scapegoated for the problems that we were seeing in the Bay. They were attacked and they were told they had to change the way they did things, but they were never worked with in a constructive manner. They were never brought in to be partners in this progress. I view um, our farmers, I view the ag sector as partners in making progress on the Bay. And under the leadership of Secretary Russell Redding here in Pennsylvania, and I'm certain this is the case in other states as well, um, we view our partners in this as our farmers. And so we've engaged with them, we've worked with them, as we did with Josh in the example I shared before in Union County, to understand the challenges that they face, the needs that they have, and then working with them to develop a plan and to help fund those plans where appropriate, either at the state level or at the federal level. Um, I view ag as central to the economic competitiveness of this Commonwealth. I view ag as central to our efforts to meet Article 1, Section 27, our responsibility to deliver clean air and pure water. And the farmers I talk to, they believe in conservation. They believe in protecting our air and water. They believe in protecting our planet. And they understand that they have a responsibility to work with us to do just that. And with that funding, has there been any talk, if budget talks to you, there's that Clean Streets Fund from 2022 yeah. um, using ARCA funds. Has there been any talk about infusing more cash into that and more cash into um, efforts for farmers? So look, we're working on those issues, and, and this should is going to apply to any questions I get on the budget. I'm not going to get into any specifics right now. We're making good progress in that space, and this is one of the important areas. We've got time for a couple more. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, well, I won't ask you for specifics, but I do want to ask you about just personally where you would stand. Can I just... So, sure. Um, not specifics. On okay. So on cyber charters, uh, could you be open to an approach that saw an overhaul or some level of reform, I mean, not as a structural change, but maybe as a financial change? So maybe re like reinstating the reimbursement that public schools get for cyber charter costs? Is that something you're open to? I was very clear in my budget address, you know, now over four months ago, that I wanted to see um, change in that space. I've articulated that in our negotiating sessions, and I can just tell you that, in general, we are making progress in uh, a multitude of areas around education. It is important to note, you've heard me say it before, please allow me to say it again, I am the only governor in the entire nation with a divided legislature. So we have to work, um, you know, across party lines and across both chambers to make progress in these areas. And education has been an area in our negotiations where we've made meaningful progress. Can you also give us a little bit more of a detailed update on negotiations? Are you hopeful that they'll wrap things up this week since the new this week? We're all working really hard. Um, and I, I have to commend the leaders, but I also have to commend the staff in both the Republican and Democratic caucuses. Uh, we all worked very hard this weekend, last weekend, during the, the holidays. Um, everybody's really focused on getting this done and getting it done in, in the best way for Pennsylvanians. And so I've been encouraging those conversations. And rather than adhering to any artificial deadlines, I think what we're all trying to do is just make meaningful progress, understand one another, make progress in the areas that we think um, it's necessary. And I can tell you, I've been really proud um, of all the teams from both parties and both chambers um, for the incredible dedication that, that they've made. I think we're very close. I said this last week. I thought we were in the red zone. I think I said Sunday to one of you out in the parking lot when I was leaving the Capitol late in the evening. Um, we're kind of deep in the red zone, and, and I think that's where we are. Are you still personally hopeful that uh, the PASS program will be part of this? I'm not going to get into any specifics on the budget. I can just tell you we're having good, honest dialogue in both chambers, and we all recognize that we've all got to compromise. And um, I realize that compromise in today's politics is maybe a word that some people uh, don't like to use. I think compromise is how you make progress for the good people of Pennsylvania, and that's exactly what we're doing. DNC is next month. Have you had any 
good dialogue with people who are putting that program together? Are you going to have a speaking role? Would you like a speaking role? Have you negotiated on that? Uh, that'll be up to the leaders of the DNC and President Biden to determine what role uh, they want me to have. And I look forward to doing my best um, in whatever capacity to highlight the stark differences between um, the views and the values and the ideas and the policies put forth uh, by each candidate and each party in this, uh, in this election. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Sure, sure.